Welcome, huge movie fanatic Nate, stopping on by. This time I'm coming your way to review a movie I've been meaning to review for months. We blind, I blind buyed it, I think, in like holiday season of 2023, watched it once and then forgot about it. And the reason I haven't reviewed it until now is because I didn't want to really rewatch it to uh, in order to review it but uh, having since i uh, see what you'll find out when you see my pearl review and i guess you'll find out now is that i saw was able to see pearl on streaming which made me review pearl and then that made me that didn't make none of this made me do anything but uh I, I saw pearl on streaming which which um as a result i decided to revisit x so i could review that and put that review up first obviously my review of pearl will follow this review, but I reviewed Pearl first. It's so confusing. But at any rate, I did rewatch Exot for the second time, and I'm um, coming your way to review the Ty West movie by the name of X. So basically, when this movie came out, there was a lot of buzz around it, and from what I understand, it did relatively well, which is why there was a prequel that came out in what, the same year, 2022? I think they both have a release year of 2022. Obviously, I saw the trailer at the time and was somewhat intrigued because of the, you know, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre freaking, you know, whatever, references and, and tributes and homage, Texas Chainsaw 1974 being among my favorite movies of all time, I was intrigued, but, um, yeah, I never got around to seeing it because I don't have a lot of faith in majority of movies that are produced and released these days in the good old, you know, whatever, 20 years into the 21st century. But I do, you know, even even with even with the fact that, you know, my, my history with Ty West only goes back to, like, House of the Devil. I was a big fan, probably still would be if I saw it again. Big fan of House of the Devil. I thought that was really cool. And, you know, then I was excited for The Innkeepers. And I when I saw Innkeepers, I'm like, oh kind of disappointed with the innkeepers and I don't think I saw anything Ty West after the innkeepers so you know I didn't really have any expectations going into this because of um, like House of the Devil or anything because it'd been so many years you know, like a decade later and whatever and so many things you know got so shitty in that 10 years that it's just like yeah I don't even if it's Ty West and plus like I say in my opinion he kind of devolved when he did Innkeepers, I wasn't like, ooh, Ty West expecting anything, because, you know, the trailer didn't really lead me to expect too much of anything. So I didn't have a whole lot of expectations going into this. The reason I blind buy it, I blind buy it like around the holiday season, I think I already said that, 2023, so I was able to get it for like $6, somewhere around $6, so I'm like, eh, we'll go for it. I wish I hadn't, but... It's fine. I guess having revisited this, I guess I do prefer this to Pearl. When I did my Pearl review, I was trying to think, you know, which one of the two films I like more. Pearl, probably this one because of the 70s, you know, 1979, you know, Texas Chainsaw kind of vibe. But, I mean, for reasons I'll get into as I review the movie, which I'm going to do right now, um, yeah, I, I don't necessarily love it and or like it even, and... Um, I wish I hadn't bought it. But anyway, the premise of this movie, which I'm sure you already know, is basically 1979, this group of people who are going, basically, um, I think the guy's like in the strip club business or something, and now that with the emerging home video market, uh, you know, on the horizon or whatever in the late 70s, he's going to get on, he's going to get on in on that. He's like a, a adult film Charles Band. He's going to get on the uh, emerging v home video market and start making, from what I understand, I you know start making porno movies and that's what this movie's about. This this van full. This, this is what I'm saying. Like Texas Chainsaw winks here and there. This van full of, of you know crew and cast of this adult film go to rent this like farm. You know this this guest house at a farm in a farm area or whatever desolate farm area does this place take place in texas i can't remember this is like a mind white movie i only watched it like freaking a couple days ago and it's already starting to disappear out of my mind but um incidentally like the van what's it called plow service or something on the side of the van plumbing might have been a good one too you know plumbing they probably had uh, big huge meetings and just trying to decide what to have on the side of the porno van like you know plumbing service or plowing service I think it's plowing something or whatever it's just like uh, it, it's funny because it, incidentally like one of the things that that's off-putting for me 
about this movie is it's like I'm fine with like a movie full of young hot chicks and get sex scenes and get naked and stuff but I did find and this could be getting on in years as well as, as you know one of the reasons why but I did find like the I guess the, the, the adult film porno like behind the scenes aspect of this movie relatively nasty and it's just like 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 for example the, the scenes where they're like you know shooting porno or whatever like they didn't do anything for the for the guy down down there, if you know what I mean. Like oh, that's probably too much information, but I mean, it, it we'll just say, didn't do anything for me, you know, in a, in a in a positive way or an arousing way, you know. It's like, and maybe it's supposed to. It was like gross. Maybe it's supposed to be gross. Maybe that's a part of the, the aspect of this movie, you know, like a Stanley Kubrick kind of attempt at doing whatever, but. I will say, you know, this movie isn't completely without, like, any kind of merit if you're, like, some fan of, like, you know, the porno business in the 70s or, or, or whatever. It might be a little bit of an insight into the, the minds or lack thereof behind the kind of people that make the porno movies and stuff or the industry or whatever. But, yeah, I found it to be particularly just the overall premise because, you know, you, you're basically... The main characters you're you're spending the whole movie with are this porno crew. Whether they're in front of the camera or behind the camera, they're all porno people. And I will say the the cameraman, you know, the the cameraman is he he want, he he likes to think he's making an artistic porno movie. And his girlfriend, it's really kind of sad what ends up happening to the girlfriend. I think I'll you know, or I should say with well, I guess too is a good word too. I won't even spoil it all. In case you haven't seen it, I'll just simply say like the little bit of the the plot twist or whatever you want to call it that happens with the cameraman. And for the record, like the the girlfriend of the cameraman is like way out of his league in my opinion. And you know I know she's the chick who like became all famous and did scream like five and six and and uh, is she the one who's in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and then the 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 that Adams Family character, I can't remember, the Wednesday, is she the one who's Wednesday? So I know she's the one, I think, who became all freaking famous and stuff, and now they're gonna, because she's all doing all this other stuff, they, who knows what the hell the, you know, Scream 7 is gonna be or whatever. From what I understand, Nev Campbell is coming back. But anyway, X, I'm reviewing X. So, yeah, it, it's really, it's probably one of the most disturbing things in the movie is, is what, you know, the, the, the plot twist or the turn or whatever you want to call it, the thing that happens with the cameraman's girlfriend. But that's what I'm saying, that's what this whole movie is for me. It's just like kind of repulsive, repugnant, nasty stuff and like why the hell would I enjoy watching this and why would I want to own this and why would I want to watch it again. That's why I took you know, whatever, better part of it. Well, I guess it's right around half a year. Is it half a year? No, it's not half a year. Yeah, it's right around half a year. That's why it took me maybe a little more than half a year to rewatch it again so I could review it. But, yeah, the, the overall feel of the movie is just kind of nasty. My favorite part of the whole movie is the very beginning where they're like leaving the, you know, strip club or whatever the hell it is, getting in the van and there's some kind of music playing and the old driving in the van, you know, homage to Texas Chainsaw 74, and of course they stop at the gas station, and it's just like, you know, the, the first part of the movie is all these Texas Chainsaw 74 homages, whether he's meaning to do it or not, he's probably meaning to do it, but um, yeah, I just found the, the whole, basically, you know, my problem with the movie is the whole thing is just kind of nasty, and if you're into that kind of stuff, more power to you, I guess. The whole thing is just this kind of nasty, and the, you know you got this the the, the guy who's like the the pimp, if you will, of the Maya Mia Mia is it Mia Goth character? She's uh, I forgot when I was watching Pearl, I forgot that she gets all naked and topless and pretty much naked in this movie. That was kind of fun. Well, there's one scene she goes for a swim, which was more enjoyable than you know I didn't enjoy it. like all the like dissimilated sex porn filming scene stuff. It was just like didn't didn't do anything for me you know in a positive way and I'm like am I getting old or am I just have taste or what I think it's the latter well it's the former as well I'm not getting any younger that's for sure but yeah this movie is more or less off-putting in my opinion and then uh, it, it's funny because it's off-putting to begin with once they get there and they start doing this porn stuff but as the movie unfolds you we, we see more of the you know, the, the, the owners of the property are this old couple, and I think it's younger, well, I know in the case of the woman, it's definitely a younger person playing the old woman because it's Mia Goth in a dual role as, you know, you know the, the porn chick, I'm going to be a star and, you know, be in porn movies, and as the Pearl, 
the old, you know, elderly woman who becomes, you know, part of the, we'll just say, problem, if you will. And, uh, yeah, you know, I can, I can, I don't have to spoil everything. What the hell? There might be some lucky people out there who haven't seen this yet, so I don't have to spoil the whole damn thing. And plus the review might be shorter as a result as well. But, yeah, I, I will say that uh, more or less, and that's kind of what more or less movies are, uh, horror movies, I should say, well, maybe movies in general, but horror movies are in the 21st century, saw all this kind of stuff, um, Terrifier, I saw the first Terrifier, and just, you know, it's the same thing where it's like they're so repugnant and just gross and nasty that it's like, you know, and I don't, maybe people from, you know, older generations, I suppose they, you know, they viewed the Friday the 13th films in the 80s the same way, as when they came out, kind of like James Garner and that clip from Murphy's Romance when they were watching, when they went to see Friday the 13th, Part 3, you know, James Garner's character walks out and is all, you know, I, you know, I we used to work at a slaughterhouse, I don't need to pay good money to see it again. And it's just like, you know, maybe people, you know, older generations felt the same way about Friday the 13th films, you know, it's all, it's all, everything's just, you know, Depending on what stage of your life you're in, you know, maybe if I was a teenager seeing these movies for the first time, they'd be my Friday the 13th, you know, whatever. But I, I, I still think that there's just, you know, there's a huge difference between like the, you know, the horror movies of the 80s, Friday the 13th franchise, and these movies. I just think they're, they're just so much more nasty in some kind of a way. And this movie is a perfect example. It's just nasty in the, the, the sense that they're just, um, you know, the whole thing's about making porno, and then the last part of it's about this old woman who's like a nymphomaniac, even at her age, and it's just like, you know, it's like, um, yeah, so, it, it, you know, and even though she's, uh, I get, you know, I will say it's good makeup, because it kind of makes you sick, but, yeah, if it's not one nasty thing in this movie, it's another. If it's not the porno-making scenes, it's the old woman going around trying to, trying to get herself some action and it's just like and then there's a scene where she talks her husband into doing it and it's just like god damn you know just when you when you thought you've seen it all you know and it's just like movies going you know i guess you can give it to the movie for being so gross maybe that's why it was so you know popular or whatever it just goes there and it's just gross in a sense that we aren't used to seeing or, or whatever and it's just like yeah but i mean there's got to be some kind of aspect of like enjoyment where's the enjoyment in a movie like this like i just there there you know i sound like a really old fogey or whatever but i guess i like i say i'm not getting any younger but i don't know that might be pretty much my review of this movie and and even the um like just the way like the kills are handled aren't um it's kind of like the was it the first one i won't spoil who it was or, or where or why or when or whatever but it's just kind of like this subtle just like you know, with, with no music or anything, and it's just like, I don't know, it's, it's just a generation thing. Like, I'm just so used to, like, Harry Manfredini blowing up the speakers when, when something, when a sharp implement comes out. And I'm not saying that you have to do every kill in every movie like that, but I just, I don't, you know, it's, it's, um... It's kind of like it. There's a reason why they just did that over and over and over in the '80s. You know, with with the Friday the Thirteenth films and, and others, is because it works. Like when I see, you know, two people standing there, and then just in silence, like right into the neck with a knife, and then like, and then. Uh, you know, like, I don't know, it, it just seems like it's missing something I should, I guess I could cue up some Harry Manfredini and, and try that out when, when that happens, but it's just like, I guess it's just a generational thing, you know, in my, back in my day, the music would, you know, burst out of the speakers when something would happen on screen, but, you know, call me crazy, but it worked. But yeah, that among just so many things about this movie. Is there anything that's enjoyable? I mean, I guess the location. I, I want to say that, if I'm correct, that both of these movies were filmed in New Zealand, if, I, if I'm correct, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if, it's, if it was cheaper. I can only assume it was cheaper to film there than, than Texas. I, I really don't see how that's possible with all that travel that's re required and, and boarding and stuff. But I guess it's boarding. You, you know, you're putting up the cast and crew no matter where you're filming. It's not like you're filming next to everyone's house or anything, but yeah, possibly filmed 
these two movies, X and Pearl, in New Zealand. And, you know, I don't think I'd, 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 well, I would have guessed it. You know, it's a pretty, uh, pretty, you know, a farm that's pretty convincing to be Texas or whatever. I guess the aspect of both of these movies that I like the best is like the pond with the gator in it and the dock and stuff, honestly. And, you know, yeah, you, you know, being, you know, a lot of people out there would say, well, Nate, this is, you know, you're a big fan of Friday the 13th films, like, this should be right up your alley. It's in the, it's kind of in the boondocks in the country and out. And it's just like, yeah, it's true. You know, and then walking around at night with that moonlight and all that kind of stuff in the, you know, the, the farmland and stuff is, is cool. But I mean, it's just like, there's gotta be more to a movie than that. Like, just like, I found myself, you know, second time seeing it recently, like just halfway through in the last half and stuff, when people are disappearing one by one and looking for other people, it's just like, Jesus Christ. You know, it's like it's just it's just missing the the Richard Band. The, I always do the famous uh, Richard Band cue from Demonic Toys. <laughs> you know, half of full moon movies back in the day. You know, even in the in the good old day, good old days was just about looking around, looking for people. You know, and it's just like God dang. And what, what I found really funny upon rewatching it again is like the star is plastered on the cover and Mia Goth, she is the star, and it's like half, the last half of the movie, like she's barely even around until maybe the very end. Everyone else is dead or whatever. But uh, yeah, maybe that will be my review of, of X. Um, I can't remember what I gave Pearl, but um, I think I gave Pearl two and a half. Well, you haven't seen that yet, but I think, oh shit, I was going to wreck. Well, you might, okay, well, I think I gave Pearl. Not not two, sorry, one and a half stars out of four stars. So now you know what I think of Pearl before you see my review of Pearl. Good one, you son of a... But anyway, I guess I'd probably go um, <clears throat> maybe just the same star rating for this one because um, it, it, I, I like this movie more because of like the 70s feel, but, but, I, but I think because of the porn aspect, it's like more nasty to watch. So like, you know, between the two movies, it kind of balances out. Like, I like this movie being set in 79 more, and like that Texas Chainsaw vibe. And I, I really love the outfit that uh, Mia Goth is in, in, in the majority of the movie like that. You know, the, the overalls thing and, you know, that are cut off or whatever. That's kind of a cool, sexy outfit. So her walking around like that's kind of fun, and you know, seeing her nude is fun. And uh, you know, the one scene where the, she's nude that doesn't involve porno filming was actually kind of erotic and and, and fun, <laughs> erotic and, and fun. And um, that was the only scene with nudity that was actually enjoyable, where there wasn't some camera and they're filming and like all this kind of you know exaggerated sex, you know, ah, uh, ah. Uh. You know, and just give me a break. But um, I don't know what I was saying. I think I was just trying to say that. What was I saying? The, just the, the one, the couple of things I like about the movie. Oh, yeah, I was just saying that she's the star, and you know, she's like barely in the second half. It seems like. But yeah, I think that's a fairly good review. I mean, my plan was probably to to spoil it more, but I've, I've been trying to like do less beat by beat, and there's no point to you know. I don't have to spoil things and stuff, so. Yeah, obviously now you know what I gave Pearl, but you know, when, when the Pearl review drops, please watch it anyway and uh, <laughs> see what my insight uh, in that movie is. It's, it's, yeah, a couple of movies that um, don't do a whole hell of a lot for me, and all I can say is, you know, I'm glad I didn't, you know, even though this isn't a Pearl review, I'm sure glad I didn't blind buy that as well. I mean, I, I learned my lesson from blind buying this, so I wasn't going to make the same mistake twice, but... Uh, Guess that'll pretty much do it for my review of, of X. You know, Mia Goth is relatively attractive and, you know, nude when she's not in the old woman makeup. You know, that's just, you know, who the hell wants to see that? You know, like the old woman going around, you know, flashing us and trying to get it, trying to get some stiffy, you know, somewhere on the farm. It's just like, and then killing anyone who turns her down. It's just like... I guess you know that's that's what horror that's what horror movies are in the 21st century. It's like it's just like Hicks from uh, Aliens. Like you can count me out. <laughs> anyway, I guess that'll pretty much do it for my review. Uh, please feel free to let me know what you think if you've seen this movie. Are you one of the you know the fans of this movie? Are you one of the non-fans? 
I mean, there's really no right or wrong in this situation, I guess, but in my particular case, I'm definitely one of the non-fans, so thank you very much for watching this review. Hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, we'll catch you on the next video.